Australia, an ancient and beautiful land abounding in nature's gifts and mysteries. And here, from the unspoiled oceans of Australia's north and northwest, comes one of the rarest and most treasured gifts of all, South Sea cultured pearls. Throughout the world, one name has come to define the standards for the finest quality and the rarest beauty of these most desirable gems. That name is Paspali, and this is their story. A story of a unique partnership between man and nature. Early in the 20th century, Australia's Northwest Ocean was home to a thriving pearl shell industry. The harvest from the world's richest shell beds supplied most of the global demand for the mother of pearl shell used for buttons, knife handles, fashion accessories and ornaments. Occasionally, the giant Pinctada Maxima oysters so prized for their shell yielded magnificent natural pearls. When found, their size, quality and rarity caused a sensation throughout the world. After fleeing the Greek island of Castellarizzo during World War I, in 1919, a young Nicholas Paspali arrived with his parents to Cossack on the coast of Western Australia in search of a new life. As diving for pearl shell was one of the only viable industries in this remote part of the world, it was only natural that this was the trade that Nicholas would learn. Embracing the challenges of the pearling business, by 1932, at just 18 years of age, he was at the helm of his own pearling lugger. After the Second World War, the pearl shell industry boomed as unprecedented demand ensured record prices right through to the mid-1950s. Then, however, the invention of the plastic button changed forever the destiny of the pearling industry. Virtually overnight, the pearling fleets were literally abandoned. But Nicholas Paspali had a vision for a new future. Determined to secure the future of his growing pearling fleet, he dreamed of creating cultured pearls of a quality equal to the rare natural South Sea pearls. Cultured pearls that would capture the imagination of the world. And that was the beginning of an extraordinary journey of persistence, innovation and discovery. I remember as a little guy, the hours that my father and some of the other pearlers would stand around the veranda with a couple of pearls in their hand, and I don't know what they spoke about, but you know, they'd be there for hours discussing this particular pearl. And they just had a passion for pearls and the industry, that's all they knew, and uh, to them there was nothing else outside that world. But no, perfectly round pearls were very, very rare. In my father's whole lifetime as a pearler, he wouldn't have put, been able to put one string of perfect pearls together. Over the next 50 years, Nicholas Paspali's vision and determination saw Paspali become Australia's largest pearling company. Today, the Paspali name is at the forefront of the modern pearling industry and recognised as the source of the world's most beautiful pearls. In the 21st century, the revolution in research and development, husbandry techniques and technological innovation pioneered by Nicholas Paspali continues. No corners are cut in any area of the group's operations, and this follows through to environmental care. Paspali is committed to creating minimal environmental disturbance and aims to ensure the areas in which we operate remain in a pristine state. The cultured pearl process begins with the careful harvesting of the Pinctada Maxima oyster, the prized silver-lipped mother of pearl shell. Operating from ocean-going vessels, teams of divers working to strict government quotas hand-pick the shells from the seabed. To ensure the species continues to flourish, 
only shells of a certain size may be harvested. Although the protective shell is hard, the oyster itself is delicate and easily stressed, so great care is taken in the handling. On board the dive ship, the shells are carefully cleaned and nourished in constantly circulating seawater. Later the shells are taken to an open patch of ocean floor, a nursery, from where they will be retrieved later in the season for the all-important seeding procedure. Here in these pristine waters, these solitary creatures, the world's largest and thickest oysters, revel in their isolation, feeding on the plankton-rich waters carried by the massive tidal flows which range as high as 10 metres. The sheer force of these flows is shown here at the Horizontal Falls, a spectacular natural phenomenon near our pearl farm at Talbot Bay in Western Australia. Today, Paspali operates pearl farms or managers farms on behalf of joint venture partners, which are dotted along more than two and a half thousand kilometres of mostly uninhabited coastline, stretching from the Coburg Peninsula to the northeast of Darwin to Dampier in Western Australia. Servicing the remote pearl farms is a major logistical operation and over the years Paspali has built a fleet of modern ships which are the focus of pearling operations. For weeks at a time, the vessels of the Paspali fleet are home to the technicians and support staff engaged in operations. In these remote locations, and often far from land, the crews must endure weather conditions from blazing tropical heat to the region's infamous cyclones. And while the waters may look tempting, many dangers lurk beneath the surface. The Paspali 4 is the latest addition to the fleet. The P-4 carries a permanent crew of 55, including an expert team of 20 technicians engaged in seeding operations, the implanting of the nuclei. While once the shells were taken to the technicians, the pearling fleet means that now the technicians can be taken to the shells. This ensures less trauma for the oysters, which greatly enhances the pearl growing process. The Paspali 3 and the Claire 2 are designed for harvesting operations and throughout the harvest season move between the farms on a carefully planned schedule. The logistics support ship Christine plies the coast throughout the year delivering supplies and equipment and providing engineering services to sea and land based pearling farms. As many of the farms are two days cruising from home ports, Paspali also has established tailor-made aerial support. Originally built in 1947, Paspali has three magnificently restored Grumman Mallard flying boats, providing essential crew movements and fresh supplies on a daily basis. They are just one part of the Pearl Aviation Fleet. In the wild, nature implants a nucleus which, over time, will become the center of a South Sea pearl. This nucleus is usually a shell fragment, sometimes a burrowing insect or parasite. Unable to get rid of the uninvited guest, the oyster encloses the intruder in a membrane or pearl sac. Then, nacre, which is the lining of the shell, forms around the nucleus, layer by layer, creating a pearl unique in its shape, size and color. Paspali pearls are cultured in partnership with nature. The process of pearl culture 
was pioneered around the turn of the 20th century in Japan, most notably by Kakichi Mikamoto. The Japanese have a long association with the Australian pearling industry, dating back to the days of hard hat diving for natural pearls. And Paspaley still employs Japanese technicians for the delicate skills and expertise required for seeding the natural wild pearl shells. Planting the nucleus, a polished sphere of American freshwater mussel shell, is a highly complex operation. Today's results are testament to decades of research and experience, and Paspaley's commitment to striving for perfection. Once seeded, the shells are returned to the sea to allow nature to take its course. As dawn breaks over the Kimberley coast, the day has already begun for Paspaley pearlers as the intensive husbandry process continues. These isolated bays were chosen for the protection they provide from seasonal cyclones and most importantly, the quality of their pristine waters, where the oysters thrive in a rich soup of microscopic plankton. Maintaining the shells in peak condition is an essential part of Paspaley's culturing process and cleaning the shells continues daily right throughout the year. This intensive process removes marine growths that can carry parasites and disease, giving the shells the optimum chance to produce pearls of great quality. A process that will take two years until the harvest. With the largest Paspaley pearls, the shells will be farmed for four to six years. At harvest time, the shells are taken once more to the mother ships. After thorough cleaning, the shells are ready for the all-important extraction of the pearl. Great care is taken by the technicians to minimise any harm or stress to the oyster as they can be used again for a second, third, or even fourth insemination. The healthier the shell, the more beautiful the pearl. Paspaley South Sea cultured pearls emerge from the shell as nature intends, with their unique qualities and exquisite luster that will not be artificially enhanced in any way. Due to many factors, high-quality cultured South Sea pearls are rarer and more valuable than other cultured pearls. Consequently, pearl quality is a far more important issue with these pearls. Both quality and value are primarily influenced by the pearl's natural colour and luster. The natural effect of the pearl's nacre. The finer the nacre, the better the colour and luster, and hence the more valuable the pearl. The production of quality pearls with thick, high quality nacre, as opposed to average or coarse nacre, is very much dependent on the experience, skills and production infrastructure of the pearl farmer. This means that just as was the case in the days of natural pearls, today's cultured South Sea pearls vary greatly in quality and value from region to region and from farmer to farmer. Today, the highest quality South Sea cultured pearls are the world's most valuable pearls. After each harvest, each Paspaley South Sea cultured pearl is individually sorted for quality to Paspaley's unique grading and classification system. In much the same way as diamonds are graded to universal standards, Paspaley has developed a comprehensive and rigorous grading matrix to ensure a supply of consistent quality and choice to our customers around the world. The technology for the production of high quality pearls is beyond the reach of most pearl farmers. This fact means that many types of cultured pearls are artificially enhanced with post-harvesting colouring and polishing to render them suitable for jewellery production. Paspaley accepts no such compromises in quality, 
Paspali South Sea cultured pearls are guaranteed to be of natural colour and lustre without artificial enhancements. While artificially enhanced pearls will quickly deteriorate over time and will not maintain their appearance, the distinctive colour and natural lustre of every Paspali pearl will last for generations. This is a fabulous crop. This is one of our nicer crops and um, for this particular lot of shells everything went right from day one and uh, nature was kind <laughs> and um, there's some fabulous pieces. But the ultimate objective is beauty and beauty can only come from the nacre itself. Pearls are meticulously graded according to five key criteria. The five virtues of pearls. Lustre, complexion, shape, size, colour. Lustre is the single most important determinant of pearl quality. The appearance and distinctive quality of all Paspali pearls is derived entirely from the layers of natural pearl nacre, the substance that gives each pearl its distinctive beauty. The nacre causes light to be refracted from different depths within the pearl, and it is this luster that defines the quality of the pearl. The quality of nacre can vary greatly, meaning there's an enormous variety of lusters and beauty between individual pearls. Paspali South Sea cultured pearls are renowned for the depth and, more importantly, the quality and richness of their nacre, providing a lustrous beauty from deep within. Without luster, the pearl can have no beauty. Without beauty, the pearl can have no quality. Nick Paspali describes the quality of luster that differentiates Paspali's pearls as distinctive as comparing the radiance of candlelight with the harshness of fluorescent lighting. Complexion is the second virtue by which pearls are valued. Pearls may have blemishes on their surface which may or may not detract from their beauty. Likewise, pearls may contain natural characteristics within the nacre, which are often referred to as movement. Once again, this does not necessarily detract from the beauty or value of the pearl. Movement is assessed by rolling the pearl between the fingers. Unlike other gems, pearls cannot be shaped by man. The pearls remain exactly as they are found when harvested. Due to the thickness of pearl nacre, Nature can produce an almost infinite variety of shapes of South Sea cultured pearls. All shapes can be set in jewellery to enhance the individual qualities and beauty of each pearl. Each offers inspiration to the talented designers who study the pearls and work with them to create unique pieces. When it comes to size and quality, Paspali South Sea cultured pearls dominate the world. Generally ranging from 10 to 15 millimetres, they sometimes reach in excess of 20 millimetres in diameter. These rare larger pearls are the most highly prized of all. Shown here is the Paspali pearl, which in the words of Nick Paspali, is the pearl of all time. Perfectly round, 20.4 millimetres in diameter, with a flawless complexion, an extraordinary luster with an intense pink orient coming from within, Nick Paspali believes we may never see another pearl like this one again. Colour, the fifth virtue, is largely a matter of individual taste, often influenced by the wearer's own skin tones. The most popular colour is white or white with slight overtones. The overtone colours also known as the Orient, are the natural colours of the South Sea pearl shell and cover the full spectrum of the rainbow, including silvers, pinks, greens, blues, creams and golds. We don't have control over what the shell does with the pearl itself. It decides what colour it's going to produce. It decides whether it's going to produce fine nacre or coarse nacre, if the rainbow colours are in the pearl or not. So. We have control over what we do, but nature and the shells, they control the rest, and we just hope, <laughs> we hope it all works for us.
Matching just one pair of gem quality pearls can sometimes mean sorting through as many as 10,000 individual pearls. Matching more than 30 to create the perfect strand is a masterful work of art and patience. The meticulous matching required to create an extraordinary strand can take up to a decade. Such rare and highly prized strands are the hallmark of Paspali. In a world of fleeting pleasures, the enduring beauty and mystique of South Sea cultured pearls only strengthens their appeal. Pearls have been prized throughout history, desired as a symbol of permanence and prestige, treasured by kings and queens. Legend has it that Cleopatra dissolved a pearl in a glass of wine before drinking it to impress Mark Antony with her wealth and power. While no longer the preserve of royalty, the alluring beauty of the pearl remains undiminished. Favoured by those renowned for their style, featured in fashion magazines and catwalks from Milan to New York, in celebrated jewellers, and the world's most prestigious auction houses. As a timeless gift to mark life's landmarks and as an enduring symbol of love, the gift of Pat's Paley South Sea cultured pearls has become one of the most significant that anyone might hope to give or to receive. With their ethereal and elegant beauty, the gift of Pat's Paley pearls is a gift that will last for generations. Paspaley offers the world's leading selection of quality South Sea cultured pearls as loose pearls, matched pairs, quality finished jewellery from our own design collections and the ultimate piece, the strand. Every Paspaley South Sea cultured pearl is a gift from nature. Each pearl an ambassador for the beautiful natural environments from which they come. Each pearl as distinctive as a moment in time, and each as unique as the woman who wears them. At Paspaley, we believe that when a woman embraces the beauty and quality of our pearls, she embraces a small part of our unique partnership with nature, and a small part of our continuing journey. We invite you to join us on that journey. There's something unique about pearls that you don't see in anything else, and they have that mysterious characteristic which is very hard to describe. It's like the moon, you know? It's almost like these don't come from <laughs> our life.